In the previous video, we spoke about how you can define and invoke excessive methods uh, versus mutated methods. Before I start tracing them uh, in the Eclipse debugger and also on the iPad, I'd like to remind you synth uh, synthetically how you can distinguish between the two uh, method kinds. Okay, let's take a look over here. So these are the two uh, two of the methods that we developed from the previous video. Okay, you can see over here, uh, get BMI report, it is considered as an excessive method. Whereas uh, we got another one here, uh, change weights by, it is considered as a mutator method. Okay, let's see synthetically how we can tell. The main critic, uh, the main part uh, to distinguish between the two kinds of method is about the return type. You can see in one, on the one hand, for get BMI report is something uh, that's a, actually a data type. So for example, string, or it can be integer, double, boolean, or later on we'll see it can be array, or it can be any uh, class type, right? As long as it's a type other than void, it will be considered as an accessor methods, okay? So you can see that's why change weights by simply return void. So that's why it's considered as mutated method, okay? That's uh, really the critical uh, piece of information you have to pay attention to. Okay, let's go a little bit further. And then you can see, since it's going to return a string, uh, so it's something other than uh, void. So that means you should really see typically a return statements at the end, okay? So return statement is always required for uh, by the excessive method. On the other hand, you can see uh, over here, since uh, change weighted by, the return type is simply void. So that's why you don't see any return statements in the method, right? You can see uh, it's a, a, a natural consequence of the uh, declared return type. And then, how are you supposed to define uh, the excessive method and also the mutated methods? The principle is, for excessive methods, you are actually supposed to do some computation, computations on attributes for the class without, so without modification. Okay, that's the uh, typically what the accessor should do. Let's see exactly how. So let's see. Uh, let me highlight all the uh, computation, uh, all the computation about the accessor method uh, in the accessor method get uh, BMI report. You can see we're trying to use uh, this dot heights. So that's one usage. This dot weights, and also actually that's it, right? You can see we are basically making use of the attribute values. So you can see this one over here is really about using the attribute values and this one here as well without modifying them. You can see we don't really assign this dot weights or this dot heights over here, right? You can see we're just using them. So that's uh, the, the characteristic for accessor methods. What about mutated methods? Mutated methods, since they don't return anything, so that means we just, what, what we really meant to do is really to modify the uh, existing value for certain attributes. Okay, so let me just write it down. So it would be to modify values of attributes. It does not have to be all the attributes, but just some selective uh, list of attributes, whatever that's applicable to your application. Okay, so you can see uh, here, this the weights is simply as, uh, reassigned to this the weights plus units, right? It's the augmented assignments uh, notation that we spoke about, right? So this is just one example about modifying the uh, value for attributes, okay? And typically, although people actually tend to do it, but I would say it's uh, kind of breaking the separation of concern. I would say typically, typically uh, in the context of excessive methods, we really don't want to do any modification. Typically, uh, no modification. should be made to attributes. Later on, maybe uh, beyond this course, maybe once, once you go to the workplace, you might see that uh, some Java programmers, they also try to modify the attribute values, even in the context of some accessor methods. It's a personable choice, but I would say I'll argue that it's actually breaking the separation of, of concern. So whenever you are defining accessor, that means you only want to get access to the attributes without modifying them by doing some computation, like what I'm doing over here. On the other hand, if you really want to modify the attribute values, you should really declare a separate mutated methods dedicated for that, uh, for that purpose, right?
All right, it's a very quick uh, recap about the syntax between uh, accessor versus mutator. I hope that's clear to you. Again, for every method, you should uh, always get public, okay, for both accessor and mutator, and also you should always get return type. In the case of accessor, it will be something other than void. And also for mutator, it will just be void. And then you have a given name for the methods over here. And also for both uh, method coins, you may give uh, a possibly empty list of parameters, right? So you can see this, uh, in this case, we don't need any extra information uh, for uh, getting the report. We just need the weights and heights. On the other hand, in order to change the weights uh, for the current uh, member, you just need some ex uh, ex uh, external inputs to, to know whether you want to gain weights or lose weights, right? So we'll see more example about passing parameters for either accessor or mutator, but in general, they can take just a list of uh, parameters, either empty or not empty, right? So here, uh, this is this being empty, it just happened to be the case, but it does not need to be the case in general.